Hello everyone, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. I hope you guys are having a great day. I'm getting ready to teach you how to add a design to a wooden round. So um, some of you guys may not be adept yet at using a jigsaw or a scroll saw and it may be it's intimidating um, to think about cutting out a shape like this out of wood. And so one of the alternatives or the ways that you can use our templates is by just placing them on a wooden round. So this is just a little 12 inch size, but you could also get one that's like 18 or 20 inches, a larger one. Um, and you could do like a full size door hanger. Now I'm doing the 12 inch size today because I want to put this on my welcome porch leaner on my front porch. I need something to go in place of the letter O and I don't have anything for spring or Easter. And so I thought it might be fun to add this little bunny head to the round. So we're going to start by painting the background of this design and then we will add this on in just a second. Hi Rita from North Carolina. How are you? Y'all tell me where you're from, where you're watching from. What's the weather like there today? Um, and I have no idea what colors I'm going to use today. So I may need y'all's help choosing colors. So what color do you think we should do for maybe the background here of our wood? I'm thinking maybe a light blue or possibly a light purple. I don't know. What do you think? Give me your feedback. Prissy is watching from Texas. It's 63 degrees. It is 59 here in Kentucky, so I'll take that. Michelle's in Florida. Nice. Hi, Stacy. Uh, Michelle thinks I should paint it blue. What do you guys think? Like a light blue? Light teal. Oh, I love teal, Christy. Or Kirsty, actually. Uh, Lucretia says hi from Texas. Teal, okay, I'm seeing several people say teal. Let's just go with teal. And you know what, I forgot to grab an egg carton, so I need one to put my paint in. Whoops, apparently I grabbed one that's already been used, so that's okay, we can use it again. The paint's all dry in it. Um, all the paints I'm gonna use today are DecoArt Americana paints. Let's see, I'm gonna have to choose a light sort of teal blue. Let's see, we have Bahama Blue or we have Sea Breeze. Sea Breeze has more of a, a teal green to it. That's this one. Bahama Blue has more of a blue. I'm kind of feeling the, t the greenish tint. What do you guys think? Hi, Chrissy from Tennessee and Danielle. She said, what measurements do you use for your large mailboxes? What? Large mailing boxes. Um, so the boxes that I use the most are 24 by 24. Four, uh, 24 by 18 by one. I think she's talking about for shipping a door hanger. So that's the ones I use the most. Okay, we're gonna use this Sea Breeze color. I can remember the name of it. And I'm gonna start with a damp brush because you can see this see, this paint is a little bit thick. And so in order to do our background coat and make it nice and smooth, you wanna start with getting your bristles damp. And we're just gonna paint all, the whole thing and give it a good background color first before we do anything else. We'll add the, we'll add the, see how I'm not getting very far with each brush stroke? That means my paint is a little too thick to spread. So just re-dip your brush in some water and look how much better it starts to spread. <clears throat> your paint will go a little farther. It does thin it out a little bit. So don't do it too much. Too much water will be bad, but if you feel like your paint's not spreading enough, get a little bit of water. Um, hi, Michelle from Indiana. Did you know that, that March is National Craft Month? No, I did not. March is National Craft Month, Leah just told me. Did you guys know that? I didn't know that. Um, somebody posted it too. Um, Debbie mentioned it. Well, thank you, Debbie. I had no idea. I didn't even know there was a National Craft Month, let alone that it's March. Maybe they picked that just for me because I always launch my painter's clubhouse in March. <laughs> Uh, Hannah, this one is a 12 inch wooden round. You can pick up wooden rounds in our shop if you want to um, at shopdoorhangers.com. And the design that I'm using today is called the bunny head. It's in the shop as well. It's one of the older ones from probably two years ago. Decided to bring back an old design today and paint it something new. I'm running out of paint here. You like my hair? Thank you, LaShonda. I don't wear it this straight very often. I usually have some kind of curls or something going on in it, but 
you know, every now and then you want to change things up. So I, I let it go straight this time. But I don't quite feel like myself with straight hair. <laughs> so I'll probably be washing it and recurling it here pretty soon. It doesn't last very long before I get tired of it. What do you put underneath when you paint? So if you um, see here, I'm getting paint all over my table um, and that's okay because this is actually, this table is made of um, melamine. I guess that's melamine. I don't know how you pronounce it, but I got the, the, the material at Lowe's and cut it down to be my craft table top. And so I can paint right on it. And then when I'm done, I can just spray something on it like Dawn Power Wash and just take a little scrubby sponge and clean it right off. It comes right off, it's no big deal. Um, and if you get something on it, you can take like a little razor blade and kind of scrape it off. You just have to be careful not to scratch the tabletop. Um, and now I'm just going over here. There's a couple spots that were kind of thin looking, so I'm just adding a little bit more paint to those areas. So just try to get a nice even coverage. If you feel like you don't have a good even coverage, get a little bit of water on your brush and just do long strokes across the entire design and that'll help redistribute the paint a little bit. It's looking pretty good. There's a little thin spot down here. It's also Women's History Month and Colon Cancer Month. Oh, Women's History Month and Colon Cancer Month. I did not know that. Thank you for letting us know, Robin. Um, so kind of like contact paper, she says. No, this is actually like hard, I don't know what you call it. It's melamine and, and it can get paint all over it. If you don't have a craft table top like mine, I would recommend putting down like an Amazon Prime box, like cut it so that it lays flat or get like a piece of poster board or just something, newspapers even, that you can put underneath your project so you don't get paint all over your, your desk. Um, okay, hang on just a second. I got my cords all tangled up down here. I'm gonna use this to dry it and then we'll add our bunny design to the wood. So for this one, I just I just pulled up the picture of the bunny from the, this is one of our older designs, so we actually don't have this one um, in multiple sizes in the file. So when you open it up, if you wanna print it smaller, open the JPEG image, and when you go to click print on your printer, click the button that says scale, and then play with the percentage of the scale till you get it down to the size you want. Um, you can see usually on your computer when you reduce the scale, there's a print preview window and you can see kind of like compared to the size of paper, how big it's gonna print. And so I just reduced this one a bit and printed it a little smaller than the sheet of paper. Uh, Linda says better than paper is good to put underneath. I've never heard of that, Linda, better than paper. <laughs> you guys are giving all kinds of crazy tips. Teresa says use puppy pads or pet pads. They're great for crafting. <laughs> Who knew? Um, so, um, Alette, Alette, I think that's how you say your name. Um, this one is not MDF. It is quarter inch thick revolution plywood. Yes, packaging paper, butcher paper, all that kind of stuff works really good. Thank you, Marie. I love these pink glasses too. They have sparkles in them. I thought they went well with this t-shirt. By the way, the t-shirt is the newest design from the Cotton Chaos t-shirt club. I just got it a um, few days ago. I love it. Super cute. It's got a cute little rainbow and it says, be happy. Um, let me put this over here. Do you paint the sides? Oh, do I paint the sides? So if it's a laser cut blank, a lot of times I don't. If it's one that's been cut with a jigsaw or a scroll saw, I usually do. Um, I actually did a really good job of not making a mess on the edges. So, I mean, it's just up to you. Personal preference, you don't have to. But if it bothers you to see that raw wood on the edge, go ahead and paint over it. Um, I always think it looks a little bit more finished if it's a raw natural wood color to go ahead and paint the edge and I completely forgot to do so. So thank you for reminding me. We'll go ahead and do that real quick before we move on. I'm gonna water down the paint just a little though because it was so thick that I feel like I won't get very far. And the paint doesn't have to be very thick to paint the edges. We can just take it and dab, dab, dab like this, or kind of swipe and just keep rolling it around to get those edges. So it just looks a little bit more polished and finished with the edges painted. Now, if you're cutting with, um, or if you're painting one of our laser etched blanks, 
I don't usually paint the edges of those because so for some reason that laser charred edge that's black will not take paint very well. It takes like multiple coats to get it to cover very good. And so I just feel like it's not worth the time. I almost just kind of prefer just to leave it. And it doesn't look bad with the black edge. It looks clean. Okay, our edge is painted. Do you like that better? The painted edge? Michelle says, I find that MDF signs from the Dollar Tree tend to warp in the Florida humidity. So, um, if you cover them with a really good clear coat sealer, they should do okay. And you may have to, like, if you keep it up year round, you may have to give it a new coat of sealer, like, once or twice a year um, to maintain the, to make sure it doesn't, you know, start warping or anything. Now, the ones from the Dollar Tree are made from, like, one eighth inch thick material. So that is definitely gonna warp very easily because it's not very thick. These are made of, uh, the ones that I sell are quarter inch thick. You're obsessed with my glasses. So let me tell you about these glasses real quick. They're from Pear Eyewear and check this out. You can change out what goes on the front of the frames. I have the link in my TikTok profile if you're interested. For those of you watching on here, I put my text link up above. If you want to text me, I'll give you the link to where you can find them. The glasses are $60, and the t these are called toppers. The toppers, um, you get three toppers with your first pair of glasses, and then you can buy additional toppers for $25 each. So here's the pink ones. Um, you can also choose the color of your frames. You can get clear, you can get black, or whatever. I chose the tortoise shell because I think they are a good, like, neutral. Um... And let me show you the different toppers I have. So I have green camouflage. I have this one. It's called botanical something. Botanical split, maybe. Or so fun. I have turquoise sparkle. Those are cute, too. And then I have tie-dye. <laughs> Kali says those glasses are so fun, aren't they? I just like to sit here and go, boop. It's like personality changes over and over and over again. But this one went with my shirt the best, so this is the one I'm wearing today. Um, and I'm building my collection of toppers. I only have like five so far, but I just ordered like five more last night, so. <laughs> She's, Aaliyah's laughing over there. Aaliyah's the one who got me onto these because she walked up in my house one day with the cutest little purple frames on her glasses, and she's like, check this out. And I'm like, what? I gotta have those. <laughs> um, even if you don't wear glasses with a prescription, you can get blue light glasses. Uh, what was the other thing? You can have sun, they have different sunglass toppers. So you can turn them into sunglasses. It's just so fun. Now I actually do have a prescription. So after you purchase your, or your glasses, they will email you and say, do you have a prescription? You can send them a picture of your prescription. Um, now, I actually did pay extra for progressive lenses. Those do cost extra. But if you don't need progressive lenses, it's like just 60 bucks for the glasses. So, um, Kimberly says, I can't wait to get my new prescription so I can get those. You're going to love them. So, the link that I can give you guys saves um, 20, tw gives you $20 off your first pair. Actually, I bet I can find it real quick and drop it in the comments for you guys. Because otherwise, I'm going to get like a million texts <laughs> of you guys asking for the link to these glasses. Um, here we go. I'm gonna find them real quick because I just had this link out the other day. Oh, hang on. I'm on the wrong page. So, oh, there it is. So this link, let me drop it over here in Facebook for y'all. I gotta find our live first and make sure the volume's turned down. I don't want to hear myself. Okay, Where do, how do I comment? The little, <laughs> the little comment thing's not popping up. There it is, okay. Dropping it in there. There's the link to the glasses if you need to get some new glasses. Um, if you're watching on TikTok, it is linked in my profile. <laughs> so yeah, that link will save you $20 off your first pair. How do you make dry paint come back to life? Uh, Cookie, I don't know if that's possible, but if your paint is not completely dry, if it's just like a little bit um, moist, you can usually take a wet brush. But I'm not sure what you're asking to do, but maybe try a baby wipe. I don't know. 
It's hard to bring it back to life though. <laughs> Uh, Sabrina says, I have a ton of frames, but I think these are super cute. They are so fun. Okay, let's move on to the next step because we've got our background painted. Thanks for helping me pick the color. And we've got our cute little bunny head with the flowers. And don't worry, I saw somebody earlier who was like, please use light purple. I'm going to use light purple somewhere on this at some point. So we're going to use our graphite paper. If you don't have some of these, it used to be called carbon paper, graphite paper. It's all the same thing. Place it shiny side down. And you can use these sheets over and over and over again, okay? Um, <clears throat> the only problem that I may have is figuring out how to center this. So, I forget that every time and I lay my graphite paper down prematurely. So, let me just show you a trick. Get out a piece of painter's tape or something that will stick. Is Roxanna on here? Hey, Roxanna. Hadn't seen you in a while, girl. I see Miss Marie mostly. Some of our Painters Club. How many Painters Clubhouse sisters do we have watching today? Y'all put hashtag PC sister in the comments if you're watching. If you're not a PC sister, our membership, I'll get this tape started in a minute, I promise. <laughs> uh, our membership, the Painters Clubhouse, opens back up on March 28th. So if you um, want to participate um, in our workshop, we will give you guys an early invitation to join. Okay, so I'm just going to put this piece of tape up here at the top, and then I'm going to kind of align the bunny where I want it, and I never measure anything. I always just eyeball it, so kind of eyeball where you want it, and then put tape it down, just like that. And so now that I have that, I can flip this up kind of like a little door hinge. I can slide my graphite paper underneath and then flip it back down. And now it's perfectly centered exactly where I wanted it. So now you just need to get a pen or something like that that you can draw on top of the design and trace that bunny's head. So this eliminates the need to have to hand draw anything. So if you're like me and you can't, you know, you, you struggle to like draw something. I don't struggle to draw so much as I struggle to get things scaled to the size that I want. So I could draw this bunny head on here, but it might be way smaller than I intended it to be. Um, let's see. How much is Painters Clubhouse? It's $47 a month. Look at all these PC sisters in the comments. Hey, girls. Tell them I'll do a happy mail. Oh, PC Aaliyah's sister. gonna do a PC sister happy mail. So if you are a PC sister and you did not comment hashtag PC sister yet, definitely put it in there. She's gonna pick somebody to win some happy mail. The bunny template is $5. Okay. I'm going to finish tracing this real quick. I'm just tracing over the lines so that it transfers the graphite paper underneath to the wood. And it makes it where um, all you have to do after that is kind of paint inside the lines. If you would like to try a template without having to buy one, we have like... I think it's at least six free ones in our free library. I did put the link in the video description for you guys. Um, it's over at southernadornmentsdecor.com. You can access the free library and download one. And for every free one that's on there, there's also a video for you to follow. So if you're worried about, you know, not know knowing how to paint it, just follow the video. Okay, so now that we have it all traced, I'm not gonna untape it yet. I'm just gonna flip it up and look to see if I got it all. And I did, so now I can, Close this up. I don't need it anymore. Fold it up nice and neat. You'll use it again in the future, I'm sure. Look at me getting paint all over myself. I made a mess with that turquoise paint. Got it on my Apple Watch and everything. Okay, so now we can take this off. All right, our happy mail winner is Miss Patty Sue Cartwright. Congrat congratulations. I can't. Well, I'm just, <laughs> do you hear me try to say congratulations? Congratulations. I'm stumbling over my words. Okay, looky here. Perfect, and we didn't even have to draw it. So now we just need to paint inside the lines, so easy. Um, if you wanted to, you could also add some designs out here. I think I'm gonna paint my bunny first before I decide if I wanna add anything in the background. I don't wanna get it too busy. Um, so for the actual bunny head, I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna paint it like white with maybe gray stripes or, or gray leopard print. Ooh, leopard print. I wanna add leopard print to everything. Did you spray sealer on the canvas garden pod? Um, I have not yet, no, because I need to go buy some. So I have not sprayed anything on that garden flag we painted yet the other day. Thank you, Karma. She says, I love watching you paint. I appreciate that. 
Um, somebody said, are you live on TikTok and Facebook at the same time? Yep. And the only way to do it is to have two devices. So I have two phones up here. Look, I see two of myself looking back at me. So I have to read two comment sections. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Any other questions? Did I miss any? I don't think so. I'm not sure. We're going to switch to a smaller brush. Let's see how this one's only like half inch wide. Get a little paint water on your brush and a little bit of white paint. Again, I'm using the Deco Art Americana. Love the way this stuff covers. Uh, Jordan thinks I need to do darker blue dots in the background. Ooh, we might have to do that. <laughs> Amy says, that's awesome. You're doing double duty on two lives. Yeah, I got to show up in all the places because I don't know where you guys hang out. You may hang out on Facebook or you may hang out on TikTok. So if I show up in both places, then it'll be easy to find me. Okay, so we're just painting the bunny head white. This is going to take a couple of coats probably. And just when you're painting, be sure to kind of barely cover up or overlap your pencil lines the, or the graphite lines that you transferred on there to kind of camouflage them. You love all my designs. Thank you, Wanda. I appreciate that. We have over a hundred different designs on our website, shopdoorhangers.com. <laughs> oh, did I say a hundred? Over a thousand. My bad. I don't know why I said a hundred. Over a thousand different designs. Um, somebody on TikTok's asking, what are the best brushes to use? I really am enjoying these right now. They're from the Deco Art website. They have blue handles yellow bristles. They um, spring back up nicely and they're easy to wash. Um, they have different sets on there. I would just start with like a beginner set and maybe a set that has a couple of larger ones in it. Um, but I have the link to the Deco Art shop in the description and also in my TikTok profile if you need it. Says you should use oh, I have tried StreamYard. Um, I felt like for a little bit it was almost dropping my reach on Facebook and stuff. It was like I wasn't being seen by as many people. And um, I kind of prefer this vertical format um, for, for painting live if I can. But um, what was the other thing? Oh, you can't, I haven't figured out yet. I don't think you can stream from StreamYard to TikTok. If that has changed, somebody tell me, because I don't, I did not know you could if you can. But the last time I looked, you couldn't. So that design that you see hanging up behind me, that is one that we're going to be teaching in a, just about three weeks. Uh, Signups for that are going to be happening very, very soon. It's called the Happy Flowers Workshop. If you're interested in that, I did put the link to the um, wait list in the description because um, that's going to be starting soon and it's $10 to participate. We're going to give you a printable template just like the one I showed you how to use just now and we're going to be using it on a wooden round. So if you can pick up an 18 inch wooden round or buy one from our shop, we're going to give you an entire supply list and walk you through how to paint that design in a private Facebook group. And so if you have been wanting to paint your first door hanger or maybe you've been intimidated to paint flowers, I want to encourage you to join us because um, it's going to make it so much easier to learn in a private group setting like that where um, you've got everybody kind of working on the same project, right? So you can ask each other questions. You can say, I'm struggling with this. Can you help me? It's, it's just going to make your experience sitting down to paint so much more enjoyable. And it's fun to do it with other people. Um, Tracy says, I'm the worst for getting paint too far up in my bristles. I think I press too hard while I'm painting. Or you may be getting too much paint on your brush. Notice I'm trying to keep the paint on the lower half of the bristles. I don't want it getting up in here and getting clogged up next to the ferrule or it will ruin the brushes. Or you may be like dipping too far down when you're getting paint. So I try not to dip and get too much on my brush at a time. But yeah, you may also be pushing down too hard and it's spreading out all over everything. Is there a beginner's class? 
So the workshop is made for beginners. Um, we do have a beginner's course, but the workshop is taught live. The beginner's course is all pre-recorded, so it depends on your learning style. If you think you would enjoy um, doing it live with us, I wanna encourage you to start with the workshop. It's just $10, and that's gonna be March 22nd and 24th. And then um, on the after you've got that first project done, if you feel like, okay, I think I can do this, um, you're welcome to join the Painter's Clubhouse. And inside the Painter's Clubhouse is, is the beginner's course as well. So no matter um, whether you do the workshop and then join first, or if you take the beginner's course, either way, you're gonna have access to it in the Painter's Clubhouse. Okay, I'm, I think I need to dry this a little bit because I'm just pushing the paint around. If you ever feel like when you're putting your second coat on, you're not getting good coverage, it's probably because the first coat is not dry enough. And then when you put the second one on, you're just kind of like pushing the, the first coat to the side instead of covering it up. I'm located in Western Kentucky. Somebody was asking. Wanda says she has that same problem with her brush. What other problems do you have? Let's, let's solve your painting woes. If you ever feel like you have a paint ridge, do you know what I'm talking about? When you go around the edge of a design and you get that like thick amount of paint on the outside edge and you're like, ah, I don't like the way that looks. You know, it creates like an odd texture. That's because you've got too much on your brush before you start that brush stroke. So one of the things you can do is you can um, start painting. Let me show you. So dip your brush. And when you get ready to paint like the edge of this bunny ear, Instead of starting right on the edge of the ear, kind of start on the inside a little bit. Get some of that excess paint off your brush. Do that first stroke right down the middle. Let me show you. You see that line? That, that's called a paint. That's what we're calling a paint ridge when you have that, that texture. So now just go back over it again now that you've got the excess off in the middle of the ear. And you're just kind of smoothing it out toward the edge without having too much paint on your brush. Smooths it up much better. But if you do get that paint ridge and you can't get rid of it, don't worry about it, y'all. I mean, a little bit of texture in your paint is not a bad thing. If you've got too many brush strokes, it's likely a problem of using too small of a brush. So you notice that I chose this one that's got like a half inch, uh, it's like a half inch wide. That allows me to do a large area at one time and have lesser brush strokes. How can I get a smooth straight line when I paint? A smooth straight line when you paint. Are you, sh what, what is the problem? Is it that your she paint doesn't look smooth or? She says your hands shake. Okay, if your hands shake, the trick is to not use this part of your hand to make the line because you do not have much control with your wrist, okay? So when you go to do a straight line, keep your hand, your wrist, and your forearm all straight. And when you do the line, don't go like this, left to right. Rotate your project so that you're pulling towards you to make the line. And the only thing you're operating is either your elbow and pulling your elbow straight back or another thing I like to do is I like to like almost make like a right angle with my elbow and my arm and keep my elbow stationary and I will like lean back in my chair. That will make a nice straight line because let me just show you on a, surely I've got something here I can demonstrate on. Let me find a piece of cardboard or something. There probably would have been something easier. Hang on. I gotta get a box cutter. Hold on. <laughs> Hang on. Okay. So let me show you real quick. This is just a piece. <laughs> I ripped off like the flap of a box. So instead of drawing a line like this with our wrist, you want to kind of start and kind of keep your arm as still as possible. Put your bristles down and kind of lean back. Okay. If you want to move your elbow and keep still in your chair, you can also just move, slide your arm back like this. So that's going to make a much smoother, nicer line. 
I hope somebody finds that helpful. <laughs> Marina says, you're so good to us. Uh, thank you so much. I try to be helpful. I try to share as many tips as possible. So anytime you guys are struggling with stuff like that, definitely tell me because I've been painting for so long that sometimes I take those little things for granted and I forget to explain them. So anytime you feel like I'm not explaining something clearly or you're struggling with something, bring it up because odds are everybody else in the comments is like, oh my goodness, I struggle with that too. You're not alone. She says thank you for that too. You're welcome. Mon, uh, let's see, somebody on TikTok says these tips are amazing. I'm so glad you find them helpful. I try to teach this stuff every time I paint live, but sometimes I get excited talking and I forget to like mention certain things. So definitely if you can think of a painting thing that you struggle with, tell me about it and I'll see if I can help. But this is stuff that we all teach in our Painters Clubhouse and in our workshops too. So if you participate in that workshop with us later in March, odds are you will pick up even more painting tips that are going to make it so much easier for you the next time you sit down to paint. Okay, I'm putting a third coat on this little bunny's ears. I feel like that turquoise is just keeps trying to pop through. So, three coats of white. You like my egg carton? <laughs> yeah, the foam egg cartons are awesome for holding your paint. Oh, you're welcome. She says, I'm a lefty and I struggle with smearing stuff. I, I feel ya. I'm not a lefty, but I still get paint on me every single time. Because I always put my arm down in the paint as I'm, as I'm painting. Uh, the link, Lisa, for the glasses is further up in the chat. Um, it's somewhere up in the comments. Yay! Did you guys just see that? Jeannie Moore is registered for the Southern Adornments Live Show. <laughs> if you don't know what she's talking about, she's coming to join us in Dallas, Texas, July 15th and 16th. If you want to come paint with me in person, it's the most fun you'll ever have, I promise. Um, sign up at southernadornmentslive.com. We are still have some tickets available right now. We have our early bird price on the website, and that's going to be going away soon. So if you want to save a little bit of money, don't wait too long to buy your ticket. It's going to be two days of painting and crafting and hanging out with the most fun people on the planet. Um, crafters, of course. And so if you guys feel like maybe you don't have anybody to craft with back home, or you just feel like you're always doing this stuff by yourself, Doing it with a group of people, especially at a fun event like this, is so different. You're going to leave feeling inspired and uplifted. Some of you guys are going to go home and be like, oh my goodness, I think I want to start a business because the girl I was sitting next to at lunch said that she started selling her de designs online and now she has an Etsy shop and you're going to leave so inspired and so pumped up because you're going to meet so many people there that are doing the same thing you are and who um, can share their tips with you. Um, they were asking about your VIP dinner, how they get access to that, and I gave them a tip on how to find it. If you're interested in the VIP dinner, that is something, <clears throat> excuse me, that it's after they purchase. It comes up after checkout. So um, it is something extra that you can buy a ticket to that happens the night before the actual event. Um, it's going to be a special dinner at a local restaurant in the Dallas area. Um, <clears throat> it's limited to only 50 people and the girls from the creative club, if you guys hear me talk about my creative club all the time are going to be there. Um, so you'll be able to ask them questions, hang out, take pictures. It's just going to be the most fun. So it's going to be a great way for you to get to know us, the speakers, the ones who are going to be teaching at the event. You're going to be able to get to know some of the other people at this VIP dinner before you go to the actual event the next day. So it's a great way to kind of mingle make friends with people before you actually, um, the event starts. Um, so if you feel like you're scared to kind of come alone, buy a ticket to that VIP dinner. It'll be a great way to, for you to like meet people in a smaller setting before you go to the big event the next day. Um, and again, that pops up after checkout. So you can't buy the VIP ticket until you buy your actual live event ticket. <clears throat> Okay, I'm missing all kinds of questions. Yep, they're coming in fast. Okay. okay. Do you have a video of the painting of the round behind you? Someone needs to learn that leopard spot. <laughs> if you want to learn how to paint leopard print, get your name on the Happy Flowers Workshop wait list. I put it up in the video description. We're going to have sign-ups for that starting soon. It's going to be taught live March 22nd and 24th in a workshop in a private Facebook group for $10. 
right. Throw me another question. If someone else is wanting to know if you have a Procreate course, and I'm dropping the link for them. Yes, I do have a Procreate course, so if you're wanting to learn how to design stuff like this on your iPad, the course is $97. Procreate4makers.com. The four is a number four. Roxana wants to know if there's a discount code for the Southern Adornments live tickets. Yes, Painters Clubhouse members have a discount code. And I've already told her to email us. And if you don't know where to find it, just email us. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get back up. Uh -huh, yes. Do you have people come to the event that just like to paint door hangers that don't have to have a business or don't sell? So we are not teaching any business at this event. So you do not have to have a business at all. You don't even have to have any painting experience at all if you want to come craft with us in Dallas. You can be a complete newbie, never done this before, and come and have a great time. Um, we're going to teach everything as if you have zero experience. So for those of you who do have experience, you're just going to, you know, be able to freestyle it if you want to, or you can follow exactly as the instructor teaches. It's up to you. Um, some of you guys follow my tutorials, line, you know, line by line, color by color, and you do exactly what I do. And some of you guys put your own spin on it and that's okay. We want you to bring all of your creative energy and your joy with you to paint and do it however you like. So if you're a complete newbie, I would suggest just following along with what the teacher says, step by step. Don't try to get ahead because you might do the wrong thing. If you have a little bit of experience, feel free to just create and have a little bit of fun with it. Uh, but yes, we're going to be doing a few door hangers, but we're also going to do maybe like a ceramic. Um, we're going to be doing some hand lettering lessons. Uh, we're going to be painting on earrings. What else? I'm forgetting a canvas painting maybe. I don't know. We've got all kinds. We've got at least 10 or 12 different crafts for you guys, and we're going to be getting... Yes, and everything we make, we will supply all of this stuff, and you get to take it home with you. So, that's awesome. This color is called dragon fruit. Isn't it pretty? Let me put this on our bunny here. And every craft that we do, you will get to do. So, you don't have to, like, pick and choose. Well, I'm, I want to do both of them. You get to do them all. <laughs> Mother daughter, that would be such a fun trip. My mom's gonna be there. She hasn't been able to attend the last two events that we've done live, and so I'm excited to have her come and meet you guys and um, kind of get to see what what these events are like. I'm excited. Kimberly can't make this year, but wants to know if you'll have another one. Um, so we probably will do another one in the future. I just don't have a date or a location or anything set for you yet. But if you can't attend in person, there is a virtual ticket that you can purchase um, so that you can follow along with all the tutorials. You'll get a supply list for each craft that we're doing so that if you see one you want to do, you can go and get the supplies for it and craft right along with us. So if you can't attend in person, I want to recommend that you do that virtual ticket because it will definitely make it to where um, you feel like you're still a part of it. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. You're too sweet. Was Corey trying to butter me up? I thought I saw him comment that I, I looked real cute. Corey's saying you're not as pretty, not as pretty as you, but I don't know what he's referring to. I don't know either. Maybe he's wanting me to cook him dinner or something. He's buttering me up for something. So the color that I just used was Dragon Fruit Purple Cow. And now I'm using this Sunshine Yellow, which is actually a patio paint. I don't have it in regular paint, but I do have it in patio paint. And I'm going to paint this third flower the yellow. I wanted colors that were going to pop really well on this turquoise. What do you think? You like them? Did I miss any other questions about the Southern Adornments live show? Mary Ellen bought a virtual ticket. How do we purchase tickets? Stephanie on TikTok is asking. There is a link in my profile. Go click on that and then click SA Live Dallas. Um, or you can just go to southernadornmentslive.com. Thank you, Zelda. Oh, Corey said the dragon fruit was pretty, and that's why I said that. Oh. <laughs> He's hoping to be in Dallas, too. I don't know. He's supposed to be at work right now. Corey, don't get in trouble playing on your phone at work. How many of the rest of you are watching me at work right now? I don't want y'all getting in trouble. <laughs> Mm 
you thought the pink was Razzleberry. It's your favorite. Razzleberry is really good. I really like that one, but this one is Dragon Fruit. It's a little bit brighter. It's a replacement for your favorite. Yeah, my favorite, my original favorite was Peony Pink, and they retired that one. So I had to find a new favorite pink. So I think that Dragon Fruit is my, is my replacement for my favorite. And Marina says, I'm working and listening. <laughs> I'm not judging. All right, it's time to do another Happy Mail. So I want you guys to comment and let me know um, when do you plan on decorating for Easter? Like, do you decorate for Easter? Maybe you don't. If you don't, let me know that. Like, how soon is too soon? <laughs> um, if you missed the, the names of all the paint colors that I've been using through this project, all you got to do is text LIST to the phone number that's in the video description. We'll send you an entire supply list. That way you can write them all down. You won't have to write them all down. You'll have them all saved and you can paint right along with me when you're ready. Yep, there are resources available. There are resources available for all the things. <laughs> if somebody said, now, decorate now. Earbuds saves you at work. Yeah, nobody has to know. They don't have to know. Well, today is Mardi Gras, so how many people are... Oh, Mardi Gras is going on. I didn't know that. Julie's already started decorating. Oh, Julie's hoarding her bottles of peony pink. <laughs> Have you got a collection of peony pink? I love the, that color. Yeah, so you better hang on to them. It's retired. Now I'm just painting in the cute little leaves that are popping up around these flowers. All right, here you go. Our Happy Mail winner is Brenda Thomas. Congratulations, Brenda. She decorates for spring first and then Easter. Oh, that's a good idea because you could kind of like put cute little flower things out and then just sprinkle a few little eggs in amongst the flowers. Corey says, I decorate by buying Charlie some real live bunnies for Easter. No, you don't, Corey. That bunny will, will end up being set free somewhere out in the, in the woods to go live happily ever after. Corey always threatens to bring my children animals, pets. He did bring me chickens one time, which I didn't get mad about, but he didn't know what he was doing and he bought just a whole random assortment of chickens and some of them were roosters and some of them were hens. So, all right, I I've, I've cannot see some of these little leaves, so I'm kind of having to just kind of freehand them because I painted over them with the three coats of white. All right, you painted that background. <laughs> yeah. Recap. Recap what you've done. Okay, so, so far we painted the background uh, with the sea breeze, which is kind of that mint teal color you see. And then we dried it, and then we transferred the design to the wood using graphite paper and a template. And this template can be found at shopdoorhangers.com. It's called the bunny head. And then we painted the bunny white with three coats. Then we painted um, this flower pink with dragon fruit, purple cow, and sunshine yellow, and now I'm painting the leaves in with Hauser light green. And you're working on plywood then? Yes, and this is this piece is a wooden round cut out of quarter inch thick plywood. As this pink dries, it kind of needs another coat, so I'm just putting that on there real quick. And then I think I'm going to pick a really light pink for the inside of the bunny ears. I'm kind of doing this a little bit out of order because I got excited talking and wasn't paying attention. <laughs> but I want to put like a uh, stripes or something like that on the actual bunny head. So I may have to just be careful about that and go back and do it later. But if you're going to do that, I would suggest doing it before you paint all the flowers and the everything else. I just kind of got excited and got out of order. We're located in Western Kentucky. Hey, Kathy. Glad you could make it. This color is called Cotton Candy. It's like a real pretty light pink. And I switched back to that half inch flat tip brush. For those flowers, I used a filbert tip brush. The filbert has a rounded edge on the end of it, and it makes it easier for painting things that have like, you know, a rounded shape, like circles or flowers. But the flat tip brush is great for kind of doing like a nice smooth edge on a design or trying to get like a, a straight line or get into a skinny little crack. 
Cindy's asking about the template behind you. The template behind me is for the Happy Flowers workshop we're doing later this month. So if you're interested in that, go put your name on the workshop wait list. It'll be $10 and we will be teaching it live inside a private Facebook group. And that's the only way that's available. Yep, that's the only way that one's available. It's not, you can't just go buy it. I probably need to take a couple pictures of painting this for the blog because I completely forgot to do that earlier. Let me get some of this. See if I can do this while I'm painting. A blog is no fun without pictures, and sometimes I forget to make take pictures of my projects. <clears throat> you love the background color? Thank you. So for the workshop, you're going to need an 18 inch wooden round and we do sell those in our shop and they will be discounted in price when it's time to sign up for the workshop. So if you can wait just a little bit, we will mark them down a little bit so that you guys can um, get one at a discount. We haven't done that yet though. Okay, I'm just doing a quick second coat on this cotton candy pink. This is going to look so cute on my porch leaner. I also see a spot that I missed with some white. I didn't get far enough down. I think I thought that was part of the flap. Or actually, there's supposed to be a leaf there. That's what the problem is. Not anymore. Okay, let me show you what we got so far. Look how cute. You love my bunny. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Cynthia. Make a cheetah bunny. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I said stripes, but I think I wanted to do um, leopard print. So thank you for reminding me of that. So for the leopard print, I'm going to use a filbert tip brush. Because, again, leopard print kind of has, like, rounded edges. Hey, Terry. We are painting on a wooden round and showing how you can use any door hanger template on a wooden round. Okay, so see how the end of this is kind of shaped like the tip of a finger, like it's curved? That's what we're going to use for our, our uh, leopard print. We're also going to be doing leopard print on this project behind me, so that'll be a lot of fun. So the leopard print I'm going to use on the bunny, I think I'm going to do a really light, light gray. I've got gray sky. And I'm going to mix a little bit of it with some white because I actually don't want it to be this gray. Let's see. Let me just squirt some in there. So about half gray, half white. That's what I'm doing. And I'm going to mix it with the bottom of my paintbrush. When you're mixing paint, the egg cartons come in really handy because you can, you know, quickly whip it up right here. Whereas sometimes if you're mixing like on a, a paper plate or a flat surface, it can get kind of frustrating because you're like having to try to keep it all in one puddle and it gets all over the place. Okay, so here's our, our gray. It's but You can see it's barely darker than our white that's right next to it. Get a little bit on your filbert tip brush. And we're just going to kind of do a little wiggly squiggly. going next to each other. It's kind of like a squiggly circle that doesn't connect. Is that your technical term? Yeah. It's wiggly squiggly. That's the technical term for it. Hang on. I've got to do this in slow motion. She's taking a picture. Got it? I have to go. pause so she can... Okay. Now she says I can go, go, go. <laughs> All right, so we're just continuing to build. Notice I didn't do a leopard print here and then another one way over here. I'm working off of the same area that I just did. So to close this one, I'm going to kind of do another one, kind of coming back the other way. You can also do it kind of like in a C shape. And if you have shaky hands, leopard print is your friend. It's going to be so easy with shaky hands. So you can either do the C shape or you can do like kind of like, it's almost like parentheses that doesn't quite close. And you can make some big and some small, like, like some slightly bigger than others. Don't make, you know, don't make a way too big difference in size, but. 
I also like to keep the little areas where they kind of disconnect going in different directions so that it doesn't look too perfect or too symmetrical. You want it to look sort of random. What do you think? You think, does this make leopard print seem more doable, a little less scary? Also, notice how I did some of them kind of disappearing halfway on and off the bunny down here. That's important. You don't want them to be floating in the middle of your bunny. <laughs> Stephanie said, I would have that thing jacked up. Yours is fantastic. Okay, Stephanie, if you're scared to do this, go get your little Amazon Prime box again and practice on cardboard. It feels exactly the same as painting on wood. Even practice kind of going halfway off the cardboard. We'll have the cutest little cardboard box by the time we're done with it. Just keep practicing. Practice on cardboard. And then when you're ready, pick up your door hanger and practice on your door hanger. What was the gray color again? This is gray sky, and I mixed it at about 50-50 with white. Now I'm just working my way around the bunny's ears. So easy. Anybody can print leopard print, paint leopard print. What's a good option if you're not a leopard print lover? Polka dots. Polka dots are great too. You can do a polka dot with the same brush or with a sponge pouncer, but in a case like this, a brush is almost easier. And you can just take and do like, you know, one side and then the other side. Fill in the middle. Or if you want to just do a straight up, just do a circle, kind of swirl it around. That was a that was a very lopsided dot, but <laughs> you can always, you know, make it a little bigger, smooth it out. Practice on cardboard. Okay, let's finish up these little leopard print spots. How many of you guys feel like you have picked up a great painting tip today? Tell me what, what tip was like a light bulb moment for you in the comments. What, what kind of tip did you pick up today that you're going to be using on a future project? Hopefully you picked up something that boosted your confidence a little bit and made you feel like you can do this too. Yeah, you can get this template. Um, somebody on TikTok's asking. This one is called the bunny head. You can find it at shopdoorhangers.com. Somebody said graphite paper. You didn't know about graphite paper. You know, I didn't know about graphite paper for the longest time. And when I discovered it, I was like, oh, this makes life so much easier. <laughs> because I used to try to freehand everything with like a pencil and there was a ton of erasing. And now I can like digitally design something on my Procreate app on my iPad. And then I just print it out, blow it up, make it bigger and print it out and trace it onto the wood. It made my life so much better. Uh, how to do the leopard print. Jordan learned how to get rid of a paint ridge. Melissa learned about filbert tip brushes. I'm loving this. We need to ask this question every week. Mm -hmm. uh, what brush chip rounded makes sense? Oh, yep. You learned that there's a difference in why. Why to use them? Um, practicing on cardboard. Millie picked up a tip about practicing on cardboard. I didn't, you know, I, I guess I don't even realize how many tips I sprinkle into one of these tutorials until you guys tell me what you learned. And I'm like, wow. Like we, we talked about a lot today. And we, put them in the blog post. and we can put them in the blog post for you guys so that you can like learn about them in the future. Um, Cindy learned that is uh, how to make a steady length line by using by not using your wrist, but by using like your whole body or your whole arm to draw the line. Also, remember drawing towards your body. Andrea learned about different kinds of paint brushes. Um, hey, Christy, create, create with Christy's watching on TikTok. She's going to be at teaching at the live event. We've been talking about it, Christy. Uh, so she may be teaching a little bit of hand lettering or um, working with washi tape. Lots of fun crafts. It's going to be so fun. Will this live be available later to rewatch? Yes. So if you're watching um, right now and you missed the first half of this, you can rewatch this video later today on my YouTube channel. So just go to YouTube and search for Southern Adornments Decor. You can find me there, and uh, this entire video will be up there this afternoon. I'm just going to add some little details to our flowers now with a little round tip brush. So this is called a round tip brush. It's 
very small. You just take it and you add your little details with it. And notice I'm adding the details last. This is not something that you jump to first. So I'm gonna choose a darker color of yellow on our flower. I used, what color was that? Marigold. So now I'm gonna use a darker color of purple on top of the purple cow to add some details to our flowers. And since I only need just a teeny amount of paint, I'm just dipping right out of the lid, the cap of the paint, paint bottle. Cause I don't, need an, I don't need enough to have to squirt some all over the. Okay, so instead of going darker on top of our pink flower, I think I'm gonna go with a lighter pink because that pink is already pretty dark. So instead of going darker, we're gonna go lighter. Let's try this color. No, that's too neon. Um, what about this one? This one may work. This one's called Carousel Pink. Pam says, as a seasoned painter, I learned that there are always beginners that are looking for great tips like this. Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, what did you say the name of your classes are called? Um, so the Painter's Clubhouse may be what you're asking about. That's going to be opening up later this month. So I've got a little bit of this Carousel Pink. And so to do our little designs on our flowers, you're going to start in the middle. Start by just kind of doing almost like a leopard print spot. See that going toward itself? And then work your way out from, oop, almost got my hand in the leopard print. Work your way out from there. Doing little wiggly, curvy lines going around the edge of the flower. I need some more paint. Where is it? There it is. Until you feel like, you know, you've gotten all the way to the edge of the flower. Brenda says she likes that you have paint all over. <laughs> yeah, I always have paint all over. Sometimes it's even in my hair. <laughs> Rebecca says metallic colors to match the flowers might be pretty. Ooh, that might be pretty. Yeah, try that on yours and send me a picture. Okay, so now that we've kind of gotten all of the main details done, I think one of the final things I'm going to do is... You know, I was trying to decide if I should do something in the background here, if I should do some kind of stripes or something like that, but I think stripes are going to be too hard to add at, without messing up our bunny, so I'm probably not going to do that. I could add polka dots, but that might busy it up too much since we have leopard print on our bunny. You don't want to have so much going on that the bunny is not the, the main focus. So I may just leave it alone and do like a cute little uh, ed thing around the edge of it. You could also even add more flowers if you want to. I think I'm just going to keep it simple for the, for today, though. And I like to add sometimes a little bit of black. Uh, I can't decide. I'm like, do I want to do a paintbrush or do I want to do a round tip brush? We'll use a round tip brush since, since, I, since I don't show that on here very often. A lot of times you guys see me do these finishing details with a paint pen. But I kind of like to change it up every now and then just so that you know, even if you don't have a paint pen, you can still do this stuff with a round tip brush. So I've got a little bit of black. And a round tip brush. Crystal says glitter. <laughs> add glitter, yeah. Um, and then you're just going to kind of add some little accent lines and things like that to the design. So don't be scared to do this. Just try to use a really light touch so that you don't make them really thick lines. And if, you're wor if your lines are coming out thicker than you want, switch to um, a smaller brush one that has less bristles in it because you can choose a round tip brush that has even less bristles and you'll get an even finer line and yes I'm putting black on my flowers can you believe that but just adding these little details makes everything stand out more it's not completely necessary if you like the way it looks before you add it then you could have stopped there Now I'm just going around the edge of our bunny. Kind of rotate the design if you need to as you paint. And you can go as slow as you need to.
For the skinnier lines, like I'm doing on the insides of these bunny ears, I'm actually using a lot less pressure. I'm barely letting the bristles glide along the bunny. And then for the outer part of the ear, I'm allowing more of the bristles to press down so it's a thicker line. You're always pulling too. too. Yes, and note it, notice I'm rotating it so that if I want a nice smooth line around the edge of my bunny ear, I'm pulling that brush toward me. I'm not using my wrist. I'm using my whole arm to create that line, even if it's not a straight line. Sometimes even curved lines can be done better. Can you use a black pen to do the outline? Yes. So if this terrifies you, just switch to it. Like use a paint pen, like a Posca pen or a Artistro marker and do it that way. Darla says she learned to use templates on all kinds of surfaces, not just wood. Oh, yes. We've been doing that over the past several weeks teaching how to use our templates on all kinds of different surfaces. So here's a big paint pen. Look how it looks huge when I hold it up like that. It's a seven millimeter. It's like got a fat tip on it. I'm gonna pump it here on my little cardboard scrap. And then I'm just gonna kind of do like a little design around the edge. Do like two or three little dots and then a line. And again, notice I'm not using my wrist. I'm using my whole body to pull that paint pen so I get a nice smooth line. Stop and do a dot, and then pull again. My whole body is moving when I'm doing this line. And I'm doing such a bold, thick line because I chose not to do anything in the background of the bunny. So it kind of adds a little bit more um, detail to the background, or like, just makes it feel a little bit more complete and not so sparse. Let's do one more happy mail, yeah. What do you think? I want you to tell me, if you painted a sign like this, where would you put it? Would you um, make a small one and put it on a tiered tray? Would you attach it to a wreath as a wreath sign? Would you put it on a porch leaner like I'm gonna do? This is gonna be the letter O in my porch leaner. Would you paint it on canvas instead of painting it on a wooden round? Because you can do that also. Would you use it as a door hanger and hang it up on your front door? Would you put it on a mantle with flowers all around it? Or um, paint it on a garden flag? We showed how to do that just like a couple weeks ago. All of these are ideas and ways that you can use our designs to create something unique for your home. And we have blog posts showing you how to do almost all of these things that we've talked about. All of these tutorials that I've talked about are also on our YouTube channel. Darby would put it on a tiered tray. A tiered tray, yes. Amber would put it on a beautiful wreath. My glasses are pear eyewear. We talked about that earlier. There's a link in my um, TikTok profile for you. Lots of people are saying door hangers. Terry says a porch leaner. Um, I think I saw somebody else say yard art. I didn't even mention that. That would This would be really cute as a, like a little yard sign or something in your garden. Add wire and ribbons to the front. Oh, uh, yes, as a big bow. I'm not a very good bow maker. It's not my favorite part of crafting, so most of my stuff doesn't get a bow simply because I just don't like making them. Uh, Vanessa would put it on her mantle. Darby would put it on canvas and set it on an easel. I like that idea. Okay, do we have a happy mail winner? It is Miss Robin Dilly Van Atta. So if that is your name, send us an email with your address and we will send you a piece of some kind of happy mail. I don't know, I don't know what yet, but we'll send you something good. Um, maybe just as a door hanger or a wreath. A lot of you guys are very good wreath makers, so you could definitely attach this as a cute little wreath sign and put all kinds of beautiful ribbons and bows around it. All right, I've gotta go. I hope you guys enjoyed this today. Again, this video will be available on my YouTube channel. You can go back and watch the entire thing. You can get the bunny head design on shopdoorhangers.com. It's an older design, um, so it might be hard to find. So use the search bar, type in bunny head. If you want to paint this one behind me, go put your name on the workshop wait list. That's going to be happening March 22nd, $10. We're going to give you a template just like we showed you how to use today. You'll use graphite paper, transfer the design, and we'll teach you how to paint the leopard print, how to do the flowers, the lettering, all of it. It's going to be so much fun. 
And if you want to come paint live with me, I want to invite you to Dallas, Texas, July 15th and 16th. The Southern Adornments live show is going to be going on two days of painting and crafting with 10 different crafters. And there's going to be all kinds of workshops. Everything you make is going to be included in your ticket price and you get to take it home with you. So who wants to come? Who wants to join me? Go to southernadornmentslive.com to get your ticket now while the early bird pricing lasts. See you next time. Bye, y'all.